Great, so welcome everyone to Advanced GP Financial Reporting with SSRS and Excel Reports. Uh, today I'm just going to go over some of the benefits of using SSRS reports and Excel reports with GP. Just review quickly how to go or how to deploy the reports. They've already been deployed on my environment just because there is some processing time. And then we'll go and do a couple demos so you can actually see the Excel reports and SSRS reports in action and straight out of GP. So first we're going to start with the SSRS, SSRS reports. Deploying the SSRS reports uh, gives you some out-of-the-box reports and it will deploy them to your report server automatically. So as long as you have the report server set up and you set that destination in the deployment window, that's where all these reports will go. The out-of-the-box reports can also be modified. So if there are a couple changes you would like to see or as the layout just isn't to your liking, you can actually change these and the updated reports will still be available within GP. You can also include totally new and totally customized SSR reports. You can build them from scratch and put them in the same location that all of the default reports were deployed to and these will also be available within GP. So not only will you have the out-of-the-box, you will also have your totally customized, personalized SSRS reports. And another great feature within GP 2013, which is new to GP 2013, is that you can print SSRS reports from specific windows within GP. The example I'm going to go over later is on the account maintenance window, and you can assign certain reports to this window and then instead of having to navigate back to the list of SSRS reports, you can actually just straight from that window use the drop-down and open that report from there. So the next slide has a screenshot of the deployment window for SSRS. And it really is as simple as typing in the report server URL and the report manager URL and then clicking deploy reports it will then process and you'll see a processing window appear. This usually takes maybe two to three minutes and then you have your SSRS reports available within GP. So this is something that can be done very quickly, it's very simple and it offers a good deal of value. So now using the Excel reports within GP, it's very similar. It's just Excel reports instead of SSRS. You deploy the out-of-the-box Excel reports from within GP. It's the same window, it's actually just a different tab. And all you need is a shared file location uh, that computers running GP have access to. So as long as the machine is running GP and has access to the shared file location, they will see these Excel reports when they're within GP. You can modify these Excel reports just like the SSRS reports. And normally when you modify, I recommend you creating a new one. So you'll open the out of the box and then you can do a save as. This way you still have the default Excel report and then also in addition, whichever changes you, you want to make. These customized Excel reports are also still available within GP. And all of these Excel reports will refresh with real-time data within GP. It's a, or at least every time the Excel report is open. So you may have to close the report and then reopen it, or you can just click the refresh on the data tab, and you will have live data as of that moment within GP. So you see here the deployment window. It is the exact same window. This is just the view from the second tab. And you see we have just set up that it's on a network shared location, defined the network shared location, and then set the user level there. Once that's done, again, you just click Deploy Reports, and it takes another two to three minutes. And then you have your Excel reports available within GP, along with your SSRS reports. So now I'm going to go over and do a few samples and demos within my own test environment. We'll first look at just opening an out-of-the-box SSRS report. And then we're actually going to make a change to that SSRS report. Then we'll open it again so you can see that these changes have taken place. 
And then we're going to assign a report to a window within GP, just so you can see actually printing one of these reports straight from a window within the client. Then very similar with the Excel reports, we're just going to open an out-of-the-box Excel report, take a look at what that offers, then save that as a new report, make some changes, just uh, some basic formatting changes on this uh, for today's purposes. But you can also use the Power Pivot to set up dashboards with the Excel reports. These dashboards and everything coming off of the Power Pivot will update automatically as well with the information from GP. So you should now be able to see my GP 2013 up on the screen. And I've just gone ahead and set up some shortcuts here under the Report Shortcuts option, the Excel reports and the SSRS reports. We're going to start with the SSRS reports. So when I click the shortcut, it comes over and takes me to the list of all of the SSRS reports. So you see these are the reporting services reports. These were the reports, the out-of-the-box reports deployed when I ran the deployment within my own system. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be in the financial series. And you see here we have the names of the reports and then to the right the series that the report is a part of. So I'm just going to scroll down into the financial series and find the bank transaction history report. So it's right here. To launch this report, I can either double click on it or mark the checkbox and then come up here and click the view button. So when I click the view button, it's going to launch the report server with the default parameters and produce the report to the screen. You see here, you just have the bank transaction history report. This is the default out of the box report. And let's say the first time you open this, you notice that it's somewhat difficult to distinguish between the lines. There are just so many lines and there's nothing separating one row from the other. So you would like to make a quick change to this. So I'm going to close this report takes me back to GP and with the bank transaction history report still checked I can click the edit report option and it's going to open the SQL Server report. So you can make quick changes within the report builder this is also where you can come to make more advanced changes or set up your totally custom reports. All I'm going to do is add a line in between each row. So I've just identified the details and I'm highlighting the row. And I'm just going to put a dashed line across the bottom. And I'm going to make it gray instead of black. I'm going to save the change, close the report builder, and now when I open the bank transaction history report, you should see the same report, just with each section separated by a gray dashed line. <clears throat> so now you see each line is separated, it's just a little easier to glance from the left side of the report to the right, see everything, see everything in one place and without having to strain your eyes. Of course, that was one of the more simple changes. You can also get much more advanced if you are more familiar with report building. So I'm going to close out of this. And now the second report I'm going to show is uh, it's actually within the purchasing series, but it's just a quick example of how you can insert a totally customized report and it will still be visible within GP. So I'm going to scroll down and find the purchasing series and the report we're looking for is the current payables amounts. 
So I've located it. Again, I mark the checkbox and I'm going to click the view button. And it's going to open up the current payables amounts report. This was totally customized, built from scratch, and it just shows each vendor and then all of the amounts that are currently outstanding. And this data is going to look a little ugly because it is uh, it is our test company. It's <laughs> ideally we wouldn't have overdue payments from 2013. So now the last demo within the SSRS reports is actually attaching one to a window. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the financial series and open the account maintenance window. And any window that has this option, you'll see right here next to the print icon is the little dropdown, dropdown for available reports. If I click it right now, there are no options. The only option is to assign the reports. So when I click this, it will open a new window with the list of available reports and selected reports. Right now, there are no selected reports. So we're going to find the current balance report. So if I'm current balance, mark the checkbox, and insert. I'm just going to add one just to show the functionality. You can add as many or as few to these windows as you like. So when I click OK, and now I've hit the drop down, you see the current balance is an available option within the window. So I'm just going to open the first account. This is the test cash account. From the drop down, I will select the current balance report. And just like running the reports before, it opens the report within Internet Explorer, gives you the account description and the current balance. There are only certain windows that this option is available on, so you won't be able to do this on every window. It's usually the cards information, so in this case the account maintenance. In the sales uh, module, you'll have it on your customer cards, and in purchasing, you'd have it on your vendor cards. So now we're going to take a look at the Excel reports and just some quick changes you can make to those. So again, on my home page, I have the Excel report shortcut. I click that and it will take me to the list of my Excel reports. I want to look at the reports only. So I've actually made a customized report list here. <clears throat> so it opens it up in the same view as my SSRS reports, just the name of the report and the series. And we're going to take a look, once again, in the financial series at the account summary. So I found the account summary default. Running it is the same way as running the SSRS reports. Mark the checkbox and click View. Instead of opening Internet Explorer, this time we will have Microsoft Excel open. So you see, by default, this report has the year, the period ID, the account number, the account description, and then the credit and debit amounts. So before I make any changes, I want to save this as a new report, just so I still have the default report available. So I'm going to click File and Save As. I'm just going to save this as Account Summary Net. I'm just going to add an additional column and a subtotal at the bottom. Uh, some quick, simple changes, but just to give you the, the idea of how you can al alter the existing reports and have those visible within GP.
So I click save, so I'm now working on my new report. I'm just gonna make a quick format change here. Add a new column, just a quick formula. Adding the debits and credits. Format this as well. And then I'm just going to add a subtotal at the bottom. So now you can come to this report and filter by a specific account and to a specific year as well. And you'll see each period totals along with the subtotal across the bottom if you did want to view multiple accounts or see the total for the entire year. I'm going to close this and I'm going to save it again. So now I'm just going to refresh the reports list. And we should now see the account summary net option here. So select and click view and you have the report we just created. I'll just remove my filters, save the report once again. So next time you open you'll have the format changes already done. So that wraps up the demo for this webinar. So if anyone has any questions after the fact, if you can't think of any questions at the moment, you can email info at uh, ibisync and we will get back to you with any answers to those questions. Or if you have questions you can think of now, 